Good day everyone, my name is Kenneth D. Velasquez, a student nurse from Davao Doctors College. So today, I will be performing my return demonstration in assessing the cardiovascular system and the peripheral vascular system. And of course, um, prior to performing the procedure, first is that we need to, to review the client's previous medical records if available and check the doctor's order for the need to perform the assessments. This procedure is important because this is to verify the order and next we need to determine the scope of the assessments needed and prepare the necessary equipment for this assessment. So I will be prep um, checking the previous medical records and it shows here that this is the first assessments of the patient and of course um, when preparing our equipments, completeness and organization of our, of all of these equipments ensures our efficiency as nurses. And of course, the equipments that we will be using for this assessment are, of course, the stethoscope, the clean working gloves if necessary, small pillow or roll towel, pen lights, is here our movable examination lights and of course this watch with a second hand on it and a two centimeter ruler and of course after um, verifying the need to perform these assessments we need to perform on um, proper hand hygiene and apply gloves if necessary and of course um after um, applying hand washing, we need to, to also observe other appropriate infection prevention procedures. And uh, this is procedure is very important because this is to deter the spread of uh, microorganisms. So let's proceed in the introductory phase. We need to greet the clients, of course, politely and the client's companion if around. And uh, also, we need to introduce ourselves and verify the client's identity and ask how the client would like to be called during this assessment. So, hello ma'am, good day. My name is Kenneth D. Velasquez, your student nurse for today. So, may I, ha uh, may I see your wristband, please? Can you please tell me your name? Virginia Velasquez. How about your birth date? December 31. How about your age? 16. Okay, thank you for that. And also, um, ma'am, um, what do you want me to call you? Regine. So, Miss Regine, uh, how's your day going so far? Good. That would be nice to hear, ma'am. And I really hope um, our day will end up a good one. And of course, um, verifying the client's identity helps us to ensure care is being rendered to the correct clients and of course uh, the next procedure will be we need to explain the procedure to the clients and uh, um, how she can participate during this assessment and also we need to provide the, the clients the opportunity to clarify ask or raise any concern this is procedure is very important because explaining the procedure to the clients can reduce the client's anxiety and enhances cooperation. So to answer any questions from our clients and would also help decrease anxiety for the assessment. So, hello Ms. Regine, I am here to perform an assessment to you. We will be inspecting, palpating, and auscultating you, okay? So some parts of your body will be exposed and I will be touching it. So do I have, do I have your own permission? Yes. Okay, thank you for that. And also, um, as you can see here, ma'am, that all of my equipment are sanitized, okay? So do you have any other questions before we proceed? No. Okay, thank you for that. And also, we need to ensure the client's comfort, privacy, and confidentiality. And of course, to ask the client to drape the client's body as they did throughout the assessments. This procedure is also important because explaining the procedure again will help the client to reduce 
um, anxiety and enhances cooperation. So, um, hello ma'am. Um, I'm just going to secure the curtains, okay? Okay ma'am, so I am securing this because some parts of your body will be exposed, okay? And just give me a minute here. So again, ma'am, do you have any other questions so far? No. Okay. So um, after that one, uh, we need to, to inquire if the client has any existing and history of cardiovascular problem as well as um, lifestyle habits that are risk factors of cardiac problems. And uh, of course, uh, this establishes a, uh, a trusting and a supportive um, relationship to the patient. And of course, ma'am, I'm, I'm, I'm adjusting this one here, okay? So I'm just going to drape this one. Are you okay? Are you comfortable? Yes. Okay, so now, ma'am, um, I will be interviewing your past, present, and family health history, okay? Okay. Okay, so do you have any other questions again? No. Okay. So, as I can see here, um, do you feel or experience anything? And... If so, does it relate to some other areas? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So if you feel pain, how often did it last? I think it depends. Or yeah, not. it depends. Okay. So um, from 1 to 10, um, 1 is the lowest and 10 is the highest. How would you rate this pain, ma'am? 4. I see. So um, what brings the pain? When I work too much. I see. So, what relieves the pain? When I rest or sleep. Okay, so do you have any other symptoms with this pain? No. Okay, like um, chest pain, no. shortness of breath, no. perspiration or diaphoresis? No. Um, okay, so does your um, heart heat faster? No. Or beat faster rather, I'm sorry. No. Uh, have you been diagnosed with heart defect or a murmur? No. Is there any history of hypertension from your family? No. Let's see. Oh, myocardial infection or coronary heart disease? No. Let's see. So, um, how about, um, do you even smoke, Ms. Regine? No. Let's see. So, okay, so do you exercise, yes or no? Yes. I see. So, do you sleep early, ma'am? Yes. Um, are you stressed right now? No. Let's see, okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Um, for the family health history, is there any history in your family having cardiovascular or disease, cardiovascular diseases? No. Um, uh, like hypertension? No. Let's see, so hair loss, ma'am. So, I um, mean, if that would be the case, ma'am, thank you very much for answering all those questions and um, you have nothing to worry about that because all of your questions will be confidential and the nurses and the doctors will only be the one who can access that one, okay? okay. So now let, let's proceed in the working phase, specifically in the assessments of the neck vessels. So the first thing that we need to assess is that we need to assess the jugular veins of the patients. And by that, first we need to stood at the right side of the client and position the client's supine with the head of the bed elevated between 30 and 45 degrees making sure that the head and the torso are on the same plane because um, this position relaxes the neck vessels and allows better visualization and access to the client's precordium so now ma'am it's just i'm just gonna adjust your head part okay so this is 40 degrees so that I can have an access to your before view. And assuming that this bed is already on 40 degrees, we can now proceed in the next procedure, which is we need to instruct the clients to turn the, the head slightly to the left and shown or shine tangential light source onto the neck, suprasternal no notch, and area around the clavicles to observe for pulsations and shadows. So now, ma'am, is that I'm gonna use this pen light 
and also um, I'm gonna ask you to turn your head to the left okay okay so is it okay if you turn your head to the left ma'am please and I'm just gonna check this one here how are you feeling right now ma'am So let's proceed on the other side. Can you look here to me, please? Okay. Okay, ma'am. It's okay. That's good. Thank you for that. And also, jugular distension was noted. Noted. We need to assess the jugular um, venous pressure or the JVP by locating the highest visible points of the distension of the internal jugular vein and next emphasize the distension with tangential tangential lighting rather because uh, the external jugular vein is more easily affected by obstruction or kinking at the base of the neck as deemed necessary again um raise or lower the, the head of the bed 30 45, 60, and 90 degrees until the highest visible point of distension of the internal jugular vein was observed. Next is that we need to measure the vertical distance in centimeters above the sternal angle by extending a long rectangular object or cord horizontally from the points and a centimeter ruler vertically from the sternal angle making an exact right angle. Also, we need to repeat the proceeding steps on the other side. So, um, now, ma'am, is that, ma'am Regine, is that we're going to use this ruler and this card, okay? So, but before that, uh, can you look um, straight ahead for me, please? So that I can assess this one clearly. And, okay. Just going to adjust this one. Again. Are you comfortable? Yes. Do you have any other questions? No. Okay. I'm just gonna grab this one a little bit. Exposing your... Okay. So now I'm gonna use this one. I'm going to transfer to the opposite side, okay? okay. Are you comfortable with the air condition now? Is the temperature okay? Okay, that's your wrong. Okay. I'm going to go back here and... Okay, so thank you for that, ma'am. So I have observed normal findings for patient Regine because her veins are not visible, indicating that the right side of the of her heart is functioning normally. So now we will be proceeding in um, assessing the in assessing the carotid arteries of the patients. So first, with the head of the bed still still slightly elevated at 30 degrees, position the client's head slightly towards the side being examined and of course palpate the carotid artery um, cautiously avoiding too much pressure or um, massaging the area because this ensures adequate blood flow through the other artery to the brain and the pressure can of course occlude the artery and the carotid um the carotid must um sinus massage and also it can um participate um ready cardia and of course we need to, to repeat the procedure in proceeding step on the other side so okay ma'am so i'm just gonna adjust it here again so Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna touch this one, okay? Okay, I'm gonna transfer here. that procedure next is that um, of course I have um, um, I have find normal findings for this patient because there are symmetrical pulse um, volumes like a uh, full pulsation and the thrusting quality and quality re remains the same when the clients breathe and turns the head and changes from supine position and elastic arterial wall so next is that um, after the procedure, we'll be turning the client's head slightly away from the side being examined because this facilitates um, like placements of the stethoscope and place the bell of the stethoscope over the carotid artery and ask the client to hold uh, her breath for a moment and auscultate the carotid artery listening for brutes and if a brute was heard gently um, palpated the artery to determine any pr um, presence of a thrill and uh, um, of course uh, again we need to repeat the preceding step on the other side so now ma'am is that I'm gonna use this one I'm gonna auscultate your neck area okay mm -hmm. so let me just touch this one and can you please um move your face there okay. just gonna use this one I'm gonna put the bell ma'am okay to the next position. Are you okay? So I have observed normal findings for patient reaching because I have um, not heard any sounds on the auscultation. So after that one, let's proceed in assessing the heart or the precordium of the patients. First, let's proceed in inspecting and palpating. So from that, let's begin with the general inspection of the chest wall and in woman, which is Frenchine, we need to keep the right chest drape gently lifted the breast with the left hand of the of the patient or asked Regine to do this for assistance. Stood at the right side of the client with the head of the bed elevated at 30 degrees and look for any abnormal pulsations and shown a tangential light across to the chest while over the cardiac apex to make this movement more visible because the bed elevated at 30 degrees to this position relaxes the neck vessels and it allows a better visualization and access to the client's recordium. Okay ma'am, so now um, um, I'm telling you that parts of your breast area will be exposed in this procedure and is it okay ma'am? Yes. Okay, so if that will be the case, I just need to adjust this one. And so I'm going to remove your top sheets. And just tell me, ma'am, if you're not comfortable, okay? I'm starting to remove your gown. Okay. 
So now, ma'am, is that uh, I just need to inspect some parts of your breast area, okay? So what I need you to do is that you need to drape this one slightly upward with your left hand, okay? Is it okay? Or do you yes. need assistance? No, I... No. Okay. So uh, uh, let me start, okay? Just um, lift that one, ma'am. Lift that up. Let me just check any parts. Okay, can you please lift that, that uh, more, please? Let's see, okay, perfect. So, thank you, ma'am. So, the next procedure is that we need to simultaneously inspect in the precordium for pulsation, so while palpating the aortic area, pulmonic area, and the tricuspid area, and also the apical area, following the techniques given. So, first, we need to palpate through the hips and lifts using the palm and or hold finger pads flat or obliquely against uh, the chest. Uh, this are uh, lift or heaves. These are the forceful cardiac constructions that can cause a slight to vigorous movement of the sternum and uh, the ribs. And pulsations may indicate increased blood volume or pressures such as clients with RVH. So, Okay, ma'am, um, what I need to do is that I'm palpating your chest area, especially the aortic area, the tricuspid area, and etc. Okay, so what I need to do is that I'm going to expose again your... And I'm going to bring this down. So, are you comfortable, ma'am? Yes. Okay. So, what I need you to do, ma'am, is that, can you please lift again your... I'm just gonna start here. You can just... Um, I have something to do with this. And then here. Lift that one, ma'am. And then here. Are you comfortable? Yes. Okay. Thank you for that, ma'am. So, there are normal findings, okay? Next is that for thrills, press the ball of the hands firmly on the chest to, the, to check for a buzzing or vibratory sensation that uh, caused by underlying turbulence flow. Thrill is a vibratory movement or resonance heard through a stethoscope. So, um, okay, so what I need you to do, ma'am, is that I'm just going to grab this one, and then I'm gonna check here. Just put your hands here, ma'am. And what I need you to do is that uh, um, drape again this one and then Okay, very good. So I'm gonna start, okay? How are you feeling? You just um, lift that one month up now. So I'm gonna need to check one here. Can you please uh, bend this forward? Okay, thank you for that. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You can... Uh, okay. So, next is that uh, we need to, to palpate impulses using finger pads flatly or obliquely on uh, the body surfaces from the aortic area, pulmonic area, and the tricuspid area. Okay, ma'am. So, again, I'm just going to assess this one here. And we're palpating again, ma'am, okay? So, what I need you to do is that uh, please drape this one and leave your breast here. Are you comfortable? I'm gonna start here.
Okay. So what I need you to do, ma'am, is that uh, please lift that one higher. In this one here, just the left hand, ma'am. No need to read this. One. Okay, good. So, so then the normal findings for that is that there are no any pulsation and uh, there are no any lift or heave that was shown in that procedure. So, the next one is that we need to palpate the apical impulse using the palmal surfaces of 2 to 3 middle fingers. Then, for a finer assessment, we need to palpate with one finger alone to confirm the characteristics of the apical impulse, noting for its location, diameter, and the amplitude. So, okay. So, um, with this procedure, ma'am, um, we're gonna use a ruler, and uh, what I need to do is that I'm going to bring this one again, and then, can you please drink this one again and lift your breast here, ma'am? Okay, so let me just check it here. Let me try this one again. Can you please lift that one a little higher, ma'am? Okay. We measure this one. Okay, thank you for that, ma'am. So, okay, you can just make this one. So, um, again, I have uh, um, concluded normal findings for patient regime because um, the pulsations are visible and in 50% of adults and palpates fall in most. So there are cases that we cannot able to palpate the apical impulse with the patient supine. So now we need to reposition the patient's interval partly onto the left lateral side and palpate it again using the palmar, palmar surfaces of the several fingers and if still unable to palpate, ask the patient to exhale fully and stop breathing for a few seconds and palpate again while patient maintains to be partly facing her left side. So, okay ma'am, so let us do this again and just, I just need to, mm -hmm. then, is it okay ma'am if you turn your body a little here? No, no need ma'am, just like that, okay? So, are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, can you please drape this one? Mm -hmm. Can you inhale for me, ma'am? Exhale, please. Inhale. Exhale. And can you please, um... Do not breathe, ma'am, for a little while, okay? Okay. Let me just, you can now breathe, ma'am, thank you. Check it here. Okay, thank you for that, ma'am. You can now position again here. Okay, so the... The, the after that procedure the next one will be we need to inspect and palpate the epigastric area at the base of the sternum for the abdo abdominal aortic pulsations so for this one ma'am is that we're just going to um okay so i want i'm going to place this my fingers here okay is that okay? Just uh, turn your hands there, ma'am. Okay, so you can just, um, mm -hmm. it's okay. Okay, 
so there are your sections. So um, I have observed normal findings for patient regime because um, I have a sense of your sick pulsations. So now let's proceed in auscultating. So first, assess for the heart rate and rhythm by placing the diaphragm of the stethoscope at the apex and listening closely to the rates and rhythm of the apical impulse. Count said the heartbeat for a full minute and if an irregular rhythm was detected, assessed for a pulse rate deficit. So, and also we need to make sure that it eliminates all resources of um, noises because heart sounds are um, a low intensity and other noise hinders the nurse to ability to hear this sound. So, okay, so... Um, what I need to do is that, again, I'm going to place it here. And now, um, I just need to auscultate in the apical area, ma'am, okay? So, Miss Regine, is it okay if you drape this again and lift your breast off? Give me a minute. Can you please lift th this up a little higher? go this is the diaphragm I'm just going to place it here that so you have 80 beats per minute so in a full minute ma'am you have 80 beats which is normal so the next thing that we need to do is that using again the diaphragm of the stethoscope first is that with the bell auscultated the heart in all four anatomic sites iorsic pulmonic tricuspid and the apical or the mitral for the heart sounds and also murmurs and ask the clients to breathe regularly while auscultating the breast the breast area so okay ma'am so again i'm auscultating this one again mm -hmm. so is it okay ma'am if you can so this one i'm focusing on this one can you breathe for me, ma'am? Inhale, exhale. Hold on here. Inhale, exhale, please. Okay. Okay, here, ma'am. So, drape this again and lift this one up. Inhale, exhale. What this one? So now we need to repeat the preceding steps while the patient is in left lateral position, sitting position, then in leaning forward and briefly stop breathing after exhalation. So um, certain sounds are more audible in certain positions. So okay ma'am, so we will be um, testing, auscultating that one rather again. But uh, can you be placed in a lateral position, ma'am, please? Mm -hmm. Just face there. Mm -hmm. And then, oh. 
sure just give me this one put your hands to that one this is the left lateral position and i'm just gonna auscultate so um whenever i place this diaphragm ma'am i want you to inhale and exhale okay 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 so is it okay if i start now I'm going to drink this one, ma'am, okay? Okay, great. Okay, so you can now lean again here. And then what I want you to do, ma'am, is that... Is it okay if you sit? If you sit? Just going to adjust this one. Are you comfortable? Yes. Okay. So again, ma'am, I'm just going to ask you. Inhale. See, okay, good. How about here? Okay. So, what I need you to do here, ma'am, is that please um, drape this one and lift this one up. Just going through this one here. And then the neutral area. So now, ma'am, what I need you to do is that, can you please lean forward? Okay, so I'm going to auscultate again, lastly, here. Next one here. And then lift your breast again, ma'am. Then lean forward. From here, lift your Okay, thank you ma'am and you can now lean back again so for the bell okay ma'am so please grab this one and then Can you inhale and exhale for me, please? Inhale and exhale, please. Okay. So, for the diaphragm, just go start here. Inhale. Exhale. How about here? Inhale. Here. Lift this one up a little bit. Inhale. Okay, good. Okay, ma'am. So, I'm going to ask you to sit, okay? So, what I need you to do, ma'am, is that. So, can you please lift your left breast and then just sculpt this one here. Inhale. Exhale. How are you feeling? Good. Inhale. Exhale. Then hold your breath, ma'am. Okay, good job. So, um, again, um, please stay here. So, for that procedure, I have observed normal findings for patient regime because um, for the S1, it is usually heard at all sides and usually louder at apical area. And for the S2, it is usually heard at all sides and usually louder at the base of the heart. And for the systole, silent is interval, slightly short, shorter duration than the diastole at a normal heart rate, which is uh, um, reaching 80 beats per minute. And for the diastole, silence is interval, slightly longer duration than systole at uh, um, the normal heart rate. So let's proceed in the next procedure. So now let's proceed in the assessment of the peripheral vascular system so now we will be we will be examining the upper extremities of the patients so first assess each arm for size symmetry skin color and temperature from the fingertips to shoulder and note for any presence of edema lesion changes in skin texture and hair distribution so Okay, ma'am, so what I need you to do is that so we're sitting now, okay? Is that okay? Okay, so.
So I'm just going to this one. Bring your feet here now. Okay. I'm going to check your arms, ma'am, ha? Okay, let's do this one. So, I have observed normal findings for patients originally because her skin color is pink, skin temperature is not excessively warm or cold, and no edema, skin texture resilience, and also moist. So, for the next procedure is that we need to inspect the peripheral veins in the arms for the presence and appearance of superficial veins when limbs are dependent and when limbs are are elevated so i'm going to check the veins here so let me just check this one is it okay if i let me check this one here okay so i'm going to elevate this one So I have observed normal findings for patients with gene because independent position, presence of distension and nodular bulges at calves when the limbs are elevated, the veins also collapse. So next procedure is that we need to palpate for the radial pulse, ulnar and vagal pulse individually and bilaterally. Okay, so now ma'am is that ma'am Regine, I'm going to palpate your radial, ulnar and the brachial pulse. Just stay there. Let's start with the left hand, okay? Just stay there. Please breathe, ma'am. Inhale and stay. How about here? Let's try this breakout pose. Let's proceed in the right hand, left hand rather. Pass okay. So, um, I have observed normal findings for patient with gene because there are symmetric pulse volumes and full pulsation. So next procedure is that we need to assess for the capillary refill. So the capillary refill, ma'am, is that I'm gonna pinch this one here and uh, let's see. I'm just So, um, in, that, in that procedure, I have observed normal finding because there is an intermittent return of color. So, now we will be performing the Allen test. And, of course, um, we need to repeat the preceding steps or the Allen test on the other arm. 
So now, ma'am, is that we will be performing the Allen test. This is just like the capillary refill, but with a twist, okay? So um, let's start with your right hand, okay? So um, I want you to make a fist, ma'am. Make it stronger. I'm going to block the blood here. And please observe. Your hands will be impaled. Um, please um, let go of that fist, ma'am. Um, you can see you are paling right. So let's um, break this uh, ulnar part. Then there is a refill part here and then here. That will be the Allen test, ma'am. Okay? So let's proceed in the um, other arm and make a fist, ma'am. Make it stronger. And then I'm going to block again the blood with your radial ends. Um, ulnar pulse and then you can let go for the fist and then it's pale right and then I'm going to let go of my arms in the ulnar part and then here okay so um, I have observed normal findings for patient 3 gene because um, there is a pink coloration returns to the palms within three to five seconds and if ulnar artery is um, patent, a pink coloration returns with three to five seconds. And if the radial artery is also patent. So now we will be examining the lower extremities of the patient. So at the supine position, assess each leg for size, symmetry, skin color, and the temperature. So from a growing to the toes. And note for any presence of lesion, changes in skin texture, and hair distribution. So um, now I'm going to uh, inspect your leg area, okay? Let's start here. Are you comfortable? Do I need to elevate your head, man? No. Sorry. Okay. Your skin is intact and your temperature is okay. So um, again, um, I have observed normal findings for patient regime because her skin color is pink, skin temperature is not excessively warm or cold, no other edema or skin texture resilience, and moist. So the next procedure will be uh, we need to inspect the peripheral veins in the legs for the presence and or the appearance of the superficial veins when limbs are dependent and when limbs are also elevated so um, i'm going to inspect again here ma'am okay in your so what i need you to do ma'am is that i'm just going to check this one here So now we will be palpating for the femoral pulse, the popliteal pulse, the posterior tibial pulse, and the dorsalis pedis, individually and bilaterally. So um, since my patient is very sensitive and do not allow me to show um, his femoral, hair femoral area pulse, we're just going to assume that I'm, um, that I'm palpating her um, femoral pulse. So just this one. This is 
the femoral area and down to here and after this one we're going to transfer at the side of course here and here So in the other side, just as shown, and here, I'm going to So next, we'll be assessing the peripheral leg veins for any signs of ulcerations, varicocytes, and the thrombophlebitis. And of course, we need to inspect the cause for the ulcerations, varicocytes, redness, and swelling over the vein sites. So, um, Ma'am Regine, do you know what is varicose? No. Have you seen any varicose in your mother? Um, just give me a minute here. I'm going to check if you have any, okay? So since you're a child, um, you don't have any redness, any varicocytes, and so that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do there are no redness also in your opposite side. Okay, so the next one is that we will be palpating the calves for the firmness or the tension of the muscles and the presence of the edema over the dorsum of the foot and areas of localized worms. Also push the calves from the side to side to test for the tenderness. So, okay, I'm just going to face this one here. I'm going to test for your tenderness in your calls, Mom Regine, okay? So what I need you to do is that... Tender means it's long. How about here? Do you feel the tenderness? No. Yes. So now we need to firmly dorsiflex the client's foot while supporting the entire leg in extension or the Homan's test or had the client stand or walk. So the last procedure in this assessment is that we need to assess for the capillary refill for both legs and repeated, repeated the preceding steps with the other leg. So um, now, ma'am, um, I'm going to lift both of your legs, okay? Yeah. I'm lifting this one for you. And. Okay. Let me just check something here. Okay, so um, is it okay if you stand here, ma'am? Yes. Are you okay with the temperature? Yes. Okay. So, you can now back there. So that we can proceed in assessing your capillary refill. Let's start in here.
so um, I have also normal findings because patients with Jean have symmetric incise and lips are not tender. So finally, we are now here in the summary and the closing phase. So we need to inform the clients the assessment was done and if deemed necessary, assist the clients to change the clothes and reposition the clients comfortably sitting on a chair. And uh, also, um, okay ma'am, so um, do you want to, to change your gown or no. not? Um, do you want to sit on a chair or not? I want to lay in the bed. Okay, so I'm just going to um, provide you a new top sheet, okay? So do you have any other questions again so far? Mm. Okay. And also, um, after that one, um, we need to summarize the information obtained during the working phase and discuss the findings to the clients because discuss uh, discuss to the clients uh, the possible plans to resolve a health concern and if present um, assessed for the client's understanding of the plan and the need for further teaching and provide the clients the opportunity to clarify ask or raise any concern so um, this procedure is important because to inform the clients about the assessments and to provide the health teaching for the patient. So um, patient regime, so as we have done a while ago, we have performed the, um, the assessments of your partial vascular and the peripheral vascular system. So what I want you to know, your findings here, and it shows here that um, in your cardiovascular, you have your neck vessels. So internal jugular pulsation are soft, rapid, and, and undulating. Your veins are not visible, which indicates that the right side of your heart is functioning normally. So in your in carotid artery, there are symmetric pulse volumes and pulse, and full pulsation. So in your um, assessment of the heart or the precordium, there is no any bruits and so there is no any aortic and rather there is a aortic pulsation so lastly your assessment of the the peripheral vascular system as specifically in your upper and your lower your skin color is pink skin temperature is not excessively warm or cold no edema skin texture is resilient and moist and also um your extremities are warm and without ed edema and no varicosities or stasis changes and you have nothing to worry about because um, again the nurse and the doctors are only um, are eligible for this uh, for the access of this one okay so again ma'am um, what I can suggest is that uh, you need to focus or you need to blend your um, lifestyle in cardiovascular endurance exercises um, do you know any ex exercises just like that yes um uh, can you please um name me one please like exercise um enhancing your cardiovascular endurance jogging yes it's a jogging running how about um riding a bicycle yes Okay. so please keep that one and drink eight, eight glasses of water a day and also um, eight hours um, a sleep for a day okay so um, after that um, we need to, to to thank the clients for her full cooperation and ended the assessment politely and done the aftercare and perform hand hygiene because this is to deter the spread of microorganisms and also we need to document the findings in the client's record using printed or electronic forms or checklist supplemented by the narrative notes when appropriate so this is the end of my return demonstration ma'am and this is the end of my assessment so thank you very much for your cooperation ma'am okay so from this do you have any other questions so far mm. Um, do you want to drink water? Mm. Okay, so are you comfortable? Yes. How about the temperature? Mm. 
is good. So, again, I'm disposing your used linen um, after, okay? And so, of course, I'm documenting your findings here. And 